Welcome and thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm Daniel Davis. As we approach the holidays, many of us are going to be in a very festive mood and sometimes so busy to pay attention that we need to be sure that as we're enjoying the holidays with our loved ones, family, friends, and the like, that we also have an eye out for our pets. On the program today, we're going to be talking with someone who has been a nurse for many years working in places such as veterinary ERs, extensive experience working with dogs and cats and even pocket pets. She also had a veterinary practice in Hillsboro, Oregon, where she actually helped maintain what is known as pet care and pet safety. I'd like to welcome to the Beyond 50 radio program today, Catherine Montag. She's going to talk with us about how we can keep an eye out for the safety of our pets to be sure the holiday season is both festive and enjoyable. Catherine, how are you doing today? Good morning, Daniel. I'm doing great. Now, tell us, uh, when you worked in an animal emergency clinic, did you see many holiday-related cases where pets were actually harmed? or well, What's going on there? Um, yes, that's a big unfortunate yes. Most people are not aware that while they are enjoying their holiday celebrations, there is, regrettably, a whole booming business taking place in an animal emergency clinic during and after Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's Eve. So many things can sicken or injure dogs and cats because many pet owners are unaware of the dangers to their pets that are innate to holiday celebrations. While you want to include your pet in the festivities, you want to steer them clear of the misfortunes and holiday landmines. Things such as unhealthy treats, toxic plants, dangerous decorations can cause real problems. And because the holidays fall in the winter months, we should talk a little bit about winterizing your pets too. I have a lot of information to cover, so I thought I'd break this subject down by each holiday. And let's start with Thanksgiving. That sounds good to me. So one of the most um, common animal emergency events, visits we would see during the Thanksgiving holidays was because pets ate something that they shouldn't have. The biggest culprit would be when pet owners give something like turkey to their pets. Many pet owners are not aware what a huge problem turkey can be for dogs and cats until something goes wrong. So turkey doesn't sound like a very good thing for pets to have. That's unusual. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's not good. So um, one of the reasons why turkey is so, uh, such a big problem is that it's very high in fat. There, there's a lot of fat in the skin and in the meat, and because turkey producers often inject things like butter in the breast and other turkey parts to make them more palatable, this increases the fat content even more. The problem with this high fat food is it can cause an acute case of pancreatitis in dogs and cats. Uh, well, tell us what pancreatitis is. That sounds pretty severe. Well, I'll tell you what. I hate seeing a case of pancreatitis. Pancreatitis is inflammation of the pancreas, which is one of the organs that help digest food. It can either be an acute or chronic condition. It is very painful and sometimes a life-threatening condition, hence a visit to the emergency clinic. Many things can cause a bout of pancreatitis, but we see a lot after pets eat turkey. Pancreatitis can be very difficult to treat and often causes long-term health problems. Most of the food on the Thanksgiving table is high in fat, too, not just the turkey. I once saw a dog, a case where a dog ate a whole stick of butter. That landed him smack in the hospital with a classic case of pancreatitis, and it was not pretty. Now, tell us about some of the foods that are related to Thanksgiving that, you know, could cause problems, things we should watch out for. Well, quite often we would see problems in the garbage hound. The garbage hound is a pet who makes it his mission in life to raid the garbage as much as possible. Cats can be a little garbage hounds as well, and it's a problem especially if the garbage hound gets a hold of some turkey bones. Turkey bones, really any bones, can splinter and tear or obstruct the GI tract. Now this poor pet is faced with major, expensive, and painful surgery. This can be a real damper on the holiday festivities. So make sure to secure those bones away from your garbage hounds. 
Now, I know one of the big things people really love to indulge in are, in, are desserts. Now, uh, chocolate, what about that? Can that cause health problems in pets? You're right, Daniel. Chocolate can be very hazardous to pets, and there's plenty of it around during the holidays. Chocolate contains caffeine and a compound called theobromine, both of which can cause rapid heart rate, rapid breathing, vomiting, diarrhea, and in advanced cases, seizures and cardiac failure. The amount of chocolate is dose-dependent, which means that the higher amount the pets ingest of what is toxic in chocolate will cause more severe symptoms. And it's impossible to gauge. For instance, eight ounces of milk chocolate will probably sicken a 50-pound dog, while just one ounce of baker's chocolate will cause a dog of the same size to seizure. So the best thing is to avoid all chocolate in pets, even small amounts. So what do you suggest if somehow your animal, especially your dog, gets a hold of chocolate? Well, if you know your dog has gotten into chocolate or is showing symptoms, contact your veterinarian or ER right away. Remember, as with any suspected poisoning, it's always less expensive, treatment is less invasive, and you get a better prognosis if your pet is treated early. So we're, while we're on the subject of desserts, let's talk about um, xylitol toxicity. Sounds good. Um, xylitol is a sugar substitute that is becoming more common in our food supply because it is lower in calories than table sugar. You can find it in sweeties, like cakes and candies and cookies. And it can be found in other products in the home as well, like it's in most toothpaste. Veterinarians are seeing more cases of xylitol toxicity as more xylitol enters our food supply. This substitute is extremely toxic in dogs, and it's very dangerous. Even just a small amount can definitely land them in the hospital. Just one stick of gum, you know, those little gums that, you know, that you get that they're really tiny, it can cause a life-threatening hypoglycemia. It can cause seizures, and it also can cause liver failure in the dog. And that's mostly what we see. We'll see dogs come in that are, their livers are failing from just one stick of gum. It's pretty incredible. And there's really not much you can do about it once the dog has been, that the xylitol has been ingested and absorbed other than providing support. So be aware of xylitol foodstuffs and the products in your home and secure them away from your pet. You know, I wanted to talk a little bit about nuts, too. There's always bowls of nuts around your house during the holidays. I don't know if you've got that, but I do always have nuts around. Moldy nuts, like Mostly walnuts. family members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, besides them. Um, moldy nuts, like walnuts, can make your dogs very sick, causing neurological symptoms and even seizures. Non-moldy nuts, like walnuts and pistachios, can cause upset stomach and um, if a GI obstruction, depending on the size of the dog. And also, macadamia nuts can make your dog really sick. Mm. Now, tell us what we can do to protect our pets from holiday food-related problems. The easiest thing to do is make sure everyone in your household is aware of this simple rule. People food for people, pet food for pets. No feasting for the furries. Now, let me say that again, okay? People food for people, Pet food for pets. If someone in your family is inclined to give their pe a pet a treat during the holidays, like kids are really good at that, maybe pick out some nice treats that they can give, or you can go to the pet store and get some stuff that's nice. But don't just wean it. So many human foodstuffs are toxic to dogs and cats. Like raisins can be very toxic. Who would think that raisins would be a problem? But they are. If you want to give a certain human food and you're not 100% sure if it's okay, ask your vet if that, you know, if something you want to give is all right. Mm -hmm. And avoid giving your pet that holiday fruit cake. I guess you're going to have to try to find another way to get rid of those holiday fruit cakes. <laughs> yeah, just tell the relatives not to come over. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us about some other sort of landmines, if you will, about food that we need to worry about on Thanksgiving. Well, there's other things besides food that we've got to worry about, Daniel. Um, the hustle and bustle of the holidays can be very stressful to pets. 
Often out-of-town guests will be coming and going, doors, garages, gates opened at a feverish rate. More pets get lost during the holidays than at any other time of the year, putting them at great risk that is inherent to lost pets, like trauma from cars or, or hiding in unsafe places. Kitties often get under the hoods of cars to get warm and can get caught in the fan belt. And that's a scary thing to see after a cat's had a fight with a fan belt. And they can also get bad burns, you know, when they get in if the, if the you know, the car's warm. And um, not having food, to, access to food and water can very quickly cause health problems. So what do you suggest we can do to minimize these dangers? Daniel, it's best to make sure your pet is secure before they get out. Provide a place where they can retreat if they're feeling anxious and worried about the holiday hubbub. A spare bedroom is nice with a comfy bed and plenty of access to food and water, and of course a litter box for the cats. You can leave the TV on or a radio on to provide um, solace and, and you know play something soothing. If you do lock your pet in a location, visit them often and walk dogs at least three times a day. And I would definitely remove the pets that are garbage hounds uh, away from the dining room. Inform all your guests that your pets are not allowed to go outside on their own and where you have located their safe room. You can ask your guests to keep an eye out for your pets. And make sure all your guests know the people food for people, pet food for pets rule. And ask them to please comply without exception no matter how cute that little beggar is. Remember, just handing out ten, two scraps, 10 people handing out two scraps can really add up and make your pet very ill. And as a last note, make sure to tell your guests to secure any, medi any medication they may have, even aspirin or ibuprofen, especially aspirin and ibuprofen. Well, that's all I got for Thanksgiving. Let's talk about Christmas. So what makes Christmas dangerous for pets? Well, I've got a lot of information to cover on this one, Daniel. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean to make holidays a big drag, but there's a lot of hazards uh, facing their pets during Christmas. So we'll start with the Christmas tree. Ingested pine needles can cause oral t irritation at best, vomiting, diarrhea, diarrhea, and weakness at worst. So don't let your pet chew on pine needles. The water at the base of the tree can have fertilizer in it, fertilizer in it which can cause severe stomach upset. Also, that water can become stagnant and be a breeding ground for nasty stomach bugs like bacteria. Find a Christmas tree base that pets can't drink out of and clean the spills up right away. The decorations on trees can also cause a problem. Electric cords can cause a shock, so secure them or, or don't let your pet near the tree if you know that they chew on cords. Consider twinkling, shining, dangling, netting, garland may all be attractive to some pets and monitor accordingly or rethink these items. Ornaments are very sharp when they're broken, so secure them very well to the tree. You definitely don't want them to chew on that, obviously. And never let your cat climb the tree. Um, which uh, they they find a lot of fun. I can't even have a tree in my house because my cat will climb it and she just goes crazy. Mm -hmm. You know some of that fake snow that mm -hmm. people spray on their trees? Well, that's really toxic. And you know, pets, they experience the world through their mouth and their tongue. So, you know, maybe just don't use that stuff. Although I think there's some that you can find that's not toxic, just read the label on the cans if you want to spray your tree. Now here's one of the things I see a lot. The tinsel on trees is a very attractive toy, especially to cats. This is so common that the veterinary industry gave it a name. It's called the strain foreign body. Ingested tinsel can be life-threatening because it can cause an obstruction ending up in painful, expensive surgeries. If you have a cat, I recommend finding something else to brighten your Christmas tree. And while we're on the subject of strain foreign body, let's move on to Christmas gifts. The ribbon and or yard on, yarn on gifts is also very attractive to cats. 
this again, this is very dangerous because cats definitely chew and swallow this stuff. Secure all your batteries. Batteries can cause burns in the mouth and GI tract if chewed. Monitor small pre pet presence for the possibility of becoming a choking hazard. Make sure the gifts you give the pet themselves is indestructible and won't cause a choking hazard. And don't give risky ribbon type toys to your cats unless you monitor them the whole time they play with it. When opening presents, immediately remove the wrapping stuff to recycling bags so your curious companions won't be tempted to chew and swallow it. Swallow it. Last Christmas, I bought the cutest recycling bags. They had this big Santa Claus on them. And my, at the end of Christmas, I had Santa Clauses lined up on my curb. It was really cool. Hmm. Uh, never put ribbon on the limbs of your cat or a collar. People think that's cute. But again, that could be a choking hazard. And watch out for rubber bands. Um, for some reason, around the limbs, like rubber bands around the limbs or even the head. For some reason, kids seem to like to put rubber bands around their pets. And after a couple weeks of that, it, it begins to be a problem. Mm -hmm. um, there are some Christmas plants that are also toxic other than pine needles. Holly can cause intense vomiting, diarrhea, and depression. Mistletoe, while that can be a lot of fun, can cause mild diarrhea and, vo and vomiting, but in large doses it can cause difficulty breathing, hallucinations, and erratic behavior. The Christmas tree rose is toxic to dogs and cats and can cause drooling, vomiting, and diarrhea. Poinsettias can cause irritation to the mouth, vomiting, and diarrhea. And lily of the valley can cause kidney failure in cats. Actually, lilies are not good for cats. No lilies are good for cats. Bottom line, maybe opt for artificial plants to decorate your home during the holidays, especially if you know your, plants, or your pets chew on plants. I can't have plants in my house because my cat is a terrible plant chewer. My husband can't bring me flowers because she'll eat them. Um, you got to love her. Now, New Year's, I didn't realize this could be a danger for pets. Tell us about that. Well, as we count down to the New Year, the biggest problem is the noise. Again, after 4th of July, more pets get out and get lost during the winter holidays. On New Year's Eve, this is caused by the anxiety from all the noise, like the New Year's Eve poppers and firecrackers. So many dogs are actually terrified of firecrackers and will run in absolute panic, sometimes for miles. So make sure to keep your pet indoors and secure during New Year's Eve. Again, an isolated safe room is great, and playing, and playing soothing mu music is great. You can try to exercise your dog earlier in the day to fatigue them so they will be more inclined to rest when the festivities start. If you know for a fact your pet is very afraid of sudden loud noises, ask your veterinarian if a sedative or tranquilizer would be warranted. We give out plenty of prescriptions during this holiday. If you are going out of town, warn your pet sitters that your dog has trouble with loud noises and give them a game plan that has worked in the past. Carefully consider your New Year's Eve decorations. Streams of thrown confetti and balloons can be a huge problem because they can cause serious GI obstructions and choking hazards. Also, monitor any candles you might be inclined to light. Scented candles emit appealing aromas to pets, and they are likely to go check them out. Even a momentary contact with a lit candle can cause a bad burn or even set your pet on fire. So consider whether candles are really necessary. There are you know, some really lovely electric candles that will give you the ambiance you're looking for without the danger. If you're having a party and serving alcohol, that can be a real issue too. Some dogs like alcohol, like beer. Alcohol can cause serious illness. It can cause coma, comas and even be life-threatening. So keep the drinking glasses away from your pet's reach. And don't offer, as you're having fun, you're like, oh, let's give 
fluffy something. Nope, don't do it. If you think your pet has ingested some alcohol, contact your veterinarian or emergency clinic. And also, as a side note, marijuana is poisonous to dogs and cats, causing some very severe problems. So if you think your pet has ingested some marijuana, we wouldn't know how that would happen, but if you think that did, <laughs> call your vet or emergency clinic. Well, that's well, really all I've got about the holidays, unless you've got some questions. Well, we yeah. talk about winterizing our pets, if you want. But that makes sense to me. Why don't we talk about winterizing our pets? Okay, Daniel. Um, and it's going to be about the time to prepare your pets for the colder weather. It seems like it's coming earlier this year, don't you think? It does. Well, obviously, we should be concerned about your pet freezing during the cold weather. Unless your dog is some cold weather breed like a St. Bernard or a Husky, warm weather dogs should only be allowed outside for a short time. Always supervise indoor pets when they go out. Cats should never be allowed to roam free in cold weather. If you have cats in the neighborhood who roam free, tap on the hood of your car before starting your engine as cats will get caught up in the fan belts. Be aware that cats wandering in the neighborhood will often get in people's garages to get warm and may go unnoticed until they are in trouble. Well, I see this all the time, or have seen this all the time, after the fact. Most cats won't vocalize that they're trapped in your garage. So if you've left your, your garage door open, do a search and make sure there's no cats in there. Or if you're missing your cat, ask your neighbor to, you know, leave their garage doors open if they wouldn't mind looking for your cat. If we get snow, be aware snow dampens sound. So pets are more at risk of getting hit by a car because they don't hear them coming. If your pet does spend time out, uh, outside unsupervised, or has some sort of containment system like a kennel, make sure they have a place to get warm and get out of the elements. Check them often and, make sh and observe their behavior. Clean snow and ice away from your pet to prevent frostbite. And um, feed them smaller portions more often, and I'm talking about outdoor animals right now, and make sure they have fresh and frozen water at all times. Be aware that antifreeze poisoning is common this time of year. We see lots of antifreeze poisonings. The symptoms are drunkenness, excessive thirst, vomiting, panting, sedation, and lethargy. These symptoms warrant an emergency visit to the ER. Well, that's all I've got, Daniel. Um, I want, just wanted to let you to reiterate that I'm a veterinary nurse. I've been doing this a long time. I'm actually not practicing anymore, but I do maintain my veterinary nursing license in Oregon. However, I did start my own little pet sitting business. It's called For Sure, For Sure Pets. And I hope that I've given you some useful information. Remember, taking precautions with pets during the holiday festivities can ensure help ensure that you and your family of pets will enjoy a, help, a happy and healthy holiday. Well, Catherine, thank you. I didn't realize there was so many obstacles during the holidays for our pets to be trying to negotiate, so that was a real eye-opener. Yeah, yeah. Like, again, again, I didn't mean to be a big drag, but, you know, oh, it's you want to have a, a nice holiday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you don't want to spend the day in the emergency <laughs> clinic and go through that, and it's expensive. You just want to have fun, and, you know, just with some some common sense, and you know your pet, you know. If they chew on stuff, then make sure they don't get a, get a hold of stuff that you don't want them to have. I'm just really... I can't say it enough. People mm -hmm. food for people, pet food for pets. You're like, oh, I know, it's just a little piece of turkey skin. But pancreatitis, it's a nasty, nasty thing, and it's very painful. And often, they, they, once they get it, it kind of destroys the pancreas. They can't really, you know, make new pancreas once something happens to them. So they end up having chronic issues with it for the rest of their life. So. Is there a website people can visit? Um, there's a poison, a, a poison, 
A pet poison hotline you probably want to be aware of. So if you want to look up some of the plants that you have around, um, you can look up any of the things I'm talking about. One of my favorite sites for pet owners to get on if they're concerned about something that may have happened or, and doesn't have to have anything to do with the holidays. It's called veterinarypartners.com. So that's really, really good. Well, very good. Yes, Catherine, you. thank you so much for joining us here on the uh, program to tell us about some of the things we need to be aware of so we don't have to sit in an ER, but we can sit with our loved ones, family, and friends and even have the pets enjoy the holidays with us as long as we keep an eye out for safety. Sure, sure. My pleasure. We want to so thank have a great, great holiday, Daniel. Do you have pets? I do. Okay. okay. <laughs> and I won't be giving them any beer or straight shots of tequila, so okay. there's no yeah, doubt yeah, about that. You want that. to quit on that one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All righty. <laughs> Catherine, thanks for joining us here on the program today. Oh, you're welcome. We want to Bye-bye. thank you, the listeners out there, and be sure to have a safe and happy holiday. Keep an eye out for the safety of your pets by all the advice that Catherine had outlined for us here on the program. Find out more about Beyond 50 by visiting us at beyond50radio.com. That is the number 50. We also have our exclusive e-news updates, which are absolutely free. Just sign up and find out what's going on. Thank you again for tuning in. I'm Daniel Davis. This is the Beyond 50 Radio Program. And remember, live your day past halfway.